Hello there guys, this is Christy Lewis from Dostoevsky in Space, and this is going to be another unedited wrap-up in TBR because um, that's just how things are going at the moment. <laughs> um, so I hope you don't mind, but I'm just going to jump straight into it. So first of all, um, I have a read-along going on right now of The Cloud of Unknowing, which is by Anonymous, <laughs> and it was written and um, circulated in the Middle Ages, and it's become known as a classic of mysticism. And I've read about half of it, and uh, honestly, I really enjoyed a lot of it. And um, I think what I really enjoyed the most was how how much meditation on scripture there is. Um, so basically, the author is writing to a young uh, acolyte. Is that the right word? No, I don't think so. I think that's a fantasy word. <laughs> um, a young, like, apprentice, apprentice, that's the word. <laughs> um, I've read too much fantasy, obviously not enough history. Uh, but anyways, um, he's writing to a young apprentice and kind of teaching him how, what to focus on and how to focus on it. And basically, he's trying to teach him how to pray and commune with God on a deeper level than an intellect can reach. So it's more of like, um, like a spiritual communion with God. It's very mystic. And um, I was really enjoying it. Like I said, it, it talks a lot about scripture. Like one of, one of the ones that it talked about a lot was um, the difference between Mary and Martha and how neither are bad, but both are different. And we need both in this world. Um, but it, how Mary is more of like the mystic, you know, who is like what the acolyte needs to aspire to be like. It needs to be more like Mary. And, you know, the Marsas of the world can um, keep the world running, you know, basically. Um, and so they're both important and they're both good. So, but it was interesting and and I was really enjoying it. Um, and I did adjust to the language much more easily, you know, after a while, I did start to adjust to the language. However, I was reading it so very slowly <laughs> that um, I just decided that since like the the ultimate meaning of the work, which is like about contemplative prayer, isn't something that I'm necessarily that interested in, I just decided, well, I can probably get great scriptural meditations um, elsewhere. And I'm sure there are other Christian classics out there that will um, be more to the purpose of what I believe and practice. So I just decided I, I'm probably going to not um, finish it, at least during the course of this readathon, because it was just taking me so very long. And, um, but this, it was a great way to spend some of my Lent reading it. I did really enjoy it. So if you are reading it, um, let me know in the comments what you're thinking of it. And I cannot wait for our book club discussion because I do have a lot to say and a lot of quotes. You know, I summarized every chapter almost that I read and, um, there's a lot of great stuff in there. So I can't wait to discuss it with you guys. Um, it's really beautiful. And then next, I finished The Silver Chair by C.S. Lewis for Middlegate March, and that was our March book club pick, and this was so good, guys. In the beginning, I was uh, honestly a little bit bored, and it took some time for it to pick up, but I think as soon as we met Puddle Glum, <laughs> I was just instantly like, yes, Puddle Glum! And then there's the giants, and then there's, you know, the underground people and the underground world, you know, and just so so fun hi <laughs> kevin just got home um anyways um <laughs> the noises he makes funny anyways um loved discussing this with the book club this is about two children this, this is like book five or something in the chronicles of narnia it's one of the later books in the Chronicles of Narnia, and I've had some, like, very differing opinions on it. Some people were like, yeah, this is my favorite, and other people were like, this is my least favorite. <laughs> so people really had divided opinions on it. Um, it's a controversial one, but I gave it an 85 out of 100. I really did enjoy it, um, and it's worth it just for Puddle Bum. That's what I wanted to go back to read it for, was for Puddle Bum. That's, that's, what I was remembering loving about it was Puddle Glum, and he's definitely worth it. Um, so, and there's some really great, like, yeah, moments, like, emotionally, you know, spiritually, yeah. So, really enjoyed it, and um, basically it's about two children who find their way into a magic land called Narnia, and they actually find that 
they they've been called into Narnia by a lion, the ruler of um, Narnia, um, who is named Aslan. And um, yeah, so they they run into all kinds of creatures. There's this really great kind of like fantasy world building that I love about it. It's very Gre Grecian, I believe most of the mythology is Grecian. I, I can never remember whether things are from Rome or from Greece. <laughs> Sorry, not really an ancient history type person, but regardless, um, really loved it and had some great thoughts on it. If you want to hear my um, more in-depth thoughts, I do have a review of it already on my channel. So check that out if you're interested. Okay, next we have Every Falling Star by Sungju Lee. And this is uh, one that I also read for Middle Grade March, although I believe it actually is classified as young adult, but it's about a 12 year old and it's his memoir from the time, uh, the time in, in North Korea that he spent um, as the son of a very privileged family. You know, he's gonna be a general's son is kind of the idea. So basically it starts there with that where he's very privileged and happy in North Korea and unknowing. He doesn't know what's been going on to other people in North Korea who aren't as privileged as he is. And then he ends up uh, losing all that privilege. They go downhill and he kind of chronicles that. And then his parents disappear into China and he's left alone and ends up kind of building a uh, gang with other boys that are in the same situation he is. They don't have parents anymore that are taking care of them. So um, he makes very close friends with these boys and it's, it's really not a happy existence. They're basically stealing to survive and they're preying on whoever looks weak enough to not be able to fend them off. Not that they are attacking people physically, but they're stealing from everybody that they can, even if those people really ha need that food and money as well. So, and they know that and it's hard for them, but they're just trying to survive basically their kids, you know? So, um, it was very heartbreaking, <laughs> very hard to listen to, but I'm really glad that I listened to it because it is a different, it's, it's definitely unique compared to some of the other things I've read. Yonmi Park's, you know, um, story, she did spend some time alone, like several months with her sister with no parental supervision. But for the most part, people, uh, the, the um, defectors that I have read about did have parents. So I hadn't read anything about like the street life in North Korea and what that was like. And this was also like, I was really hoping that Koreadathon would be a thing <laughs> this month. So I also read it for that. But yeah, that was great. Um, I'm also, I finished Witch Hat Atelier volume like four, I think, by Kamome Shirahama. And this is a cute manga series that has like just my favorite manga art that I've ever seen, I think. It's um, really adorable following uh, some kids who are learning magic from their master magician. And it's a drawing magic. And so, um, yeah, it's really cute seeing their relationships and kind of the dane. There's there's like a, a larger plot that connects all of them, but each um, manga has its own little adventure about the kids like gaining acceptance and learning and kind of the trials they go through um, as apprentices and stuff like that. And I've just found it to be just such a delight, such a joy to read in the evenings and relax with. So really enjoying that. And it's it's already becoming a favorite manga for me. So yay. Um, Witch Hat Atelier was that one. And then next I finished A Rover's Story and I didn't write down <laughs> the author's name for this. This was, oh, and I think, by the way, I think Witch Hat Atelier is also counts for, for Middle Grade March because I'm pretty sure it's aimed towards that age group of kids. But obviously adults can enjoy it too because I do. <laughs> and Kate does. Kate's the one who told me about it. Kate how? So anyways, a rover story. This was great. And I'm going off the cuff a little bit um, for some of these, including this one, because I didn't take extensive notes. I was just listening to it on audio. And I really enjoyed it on audio. And it really hits you in the feels. I definitely was crying <laughs> by the end of the book. Um, and so this is about a Mars rover who uh, he has a mission when he gets to Mars to um, like save this other rover and um, get really interesting samples and pictures and video and information about Mars to send home. And 
uh, just the vast amount of time that is encompassed in this novel was surprising. You know, for a middle grade novel, it usually doesn't encompass um, years and years and years, but this one does because it's about a Mars rover. Um, so, and the kind of a life of a Mars rover on, on Mars is going to take, you know, quite a few years to go through his life cycle. So, yeah, I really enjoyed this a lot. I haven't read that much middle grade sci-fi, so this one was a great one to kind of jump into with it, and I really enjoyed it. I'm so glad that this was the group pick for Middle Grade March. Thank you so much to the hosts of Middle Grade March for hosting. It's always a pleasure. So, uh, I need a sip of water, sorry. <laughs> Hang on. Okay. Next, um, The Witch Trials of J.K. Rowling is a podcast, and I don't think it's quite finished, but I'm on, like, I, they released episode six, and I've already listened to that. I don't know if seven is out yet, but I need to check. This has been fascinating because um, if you know anything about J.K. Rowling, uh, she was canceled on Twitter for some statements she made related to um, trans rights. And so this podcast by the Free Press is what they're called. Um, is kind of examining that whole issue. They examine the issue of free speech and also of trans rights. And they're trying to get like a whole picture. And I think their theme to a large degree is uh, basically that we need to actually be empathetic and talking with each other instead of getting really mad and um, threatening with each other when we disagree. Basically, it's about having, you know, uh, discourse rather than just hating people who disagree with you. So. Um, I think that's kind of their intentions, but they're being, it seems like pretty fair to me. Um, so they start the podcast by interviewing J.K. Rowling and talking about how she felt when she was like canceled by people in America, mostly, um, who were Christians and canceling her and her book. And that was like the first witch trial, so to speak. And then it goes into some of her history of being a domestic violence survivor and stuff like that and um and how much she actually has done research into like trans issues and women's issues and how she is a feminist and how her works have been like a real safe place i guess you would say for people in the lgbtq movement um, at least until she started tweeting about her thoughts on feminism and trans rights and where they conflict you know um so those those tweets, I don't know if, you, I didn't really actually know what all of that controversy was about because I'm not on Twitter purposefully for the most part. I'm not on Twitter because um, I just get really stressed out with stuff like that. But this was a fascinating podcast to kind of dig into that whole story. And in the current, the last, except for several episodes, it was exploring like the nature of social media and where um, some of like the history of uh, how trans and LGBTQ movements and ideas have come about, like how a lot of them came from Tumblr and stuff like that. And, um, and then the last episode that I listened to was interviewing two trans people in particular, and they gave their thoughts on JK Rowling and also their personal stories to some degree. So yeah, it's really going like, it's ta the, the people running this podcast are talking to everybody that's very interesting. Um, that could possibly, you know, offer some insight into this issue. Um, like one of the trans people that they talk to is, a, is um, he, uh, he is a female transitioning into a male um, and is 16 years old and so, and didn't show any signs of, um, what's it called, dysphoria when they were young as a child. Whereas, you know, a lot of times people are more comfortable making medical interventions with people who are having dysphoria for a long time, even at a young age. They feel more comfortable making medical uh, interventions in somebody like that to see if it can help them, you know, so to deal with their mental health issues. But in this case, this was a child who did not have dysphoria until they became a teenager and started puberty. And then they started feeling dysphoria. Um, and so it was interesting because just, that's just one example of why I really am enjoying the choices that this, this podcaster 
um, is making um, because she is specifically talking to people who are at the heart of lots of controversies and they offer like a very enlightening perspective. So I'm really enjoying the podcast um, and I would recommend it. I A couple of my friends were talking with me about it and initially I was like, I don't know if I'm really that interested, but when they were talking to me about it, I finally was like, okay, I'll check it out. And it, I think it is really well done. So I've been enjoying listening to that. And also the genius under the table. This was my next middle grade March pick. This is a memoir of a Jewish boy who's living behind the iron curtain. And it's a uh, very, very humorous, even though the family is struggling. And I, I really loved kind of the tone of the work because it just did feel like, um, yeah, you can tell they're struggling, but there's, there's just this real sense of humor about it that made it very charming as well. And I ended up, this is by Eugene Yelchin or something like that. I can't remember, but I ended up reading, I'm almost done. I'm like, oh, I should have finished it before I filmed this. I only have like four more percent of it, I think. Um, Breaking Stalin's Nose, and the author is Eugene Yelchin, yeah. And so I, I'm, I'm going to be finishing up with Breaking Stalin's Nose, which is like the counterpoint to this memoir of a Jewish boy, the first one is, and then Breaking Stalin's Nose is a novel about a Russian boy who is it's like very Louis Sachar. It's like very absurdist feeling, which is fun. Um, yeah, I'm really enjoying both of those. So yeah, loving those. Um, recommended by Kate Howe, of course, <laughs> the incomparable. Um, next, I also finished While Time Remains by Yanmi Park. And this is a North Korean defector that I think I've already mentioned in this video. Um, and so this is her second book, which just came out and I just did a vlog about it. Um, because I, I actually read it quickly enough, physically. I didn't even listen to it, which is really exciting. Um, it was that good. And really it's interesting to read from her perspective because she really is kind of a social experiment, you know. She showed up in America, or she, she, she grew up in North Korea being brainwashed and starved and not knowing that there were basically other races or, um, you know, being totally foreign to the, the concept of racism because there was just North Koreans around her. She was so isolated. And then dropped into America, which is obviously so different in so many ways. Um, there's so much more plenty here and people can take care of themselves and they have freedom and it's really amazing to see her appreciation of American culture because it's just really refreshing I guess you would say um, to hear from her perspective somebody who has actually suffered and lived somewhere that was extremely just terrible in every way like she almost died the reason she didn't die was because she allowed herself to be sold into sexual slavery instead of starving dying dying by starvation so really amazing she ended up writing this book um, while time remains you know after being an american for several years because she was robbed on the streets of chicago in broad daylight when she was with her very young son and people accused her of racism <laughs> because of the color of her attackers and she was like okay I, I have some things to say about this <laughs> and uh, yeah, I just think she's amazing and so cool and I will read anything that she publishes. And initially when I was reading it, I was like, oh, is this going to be like more of what I've just heard from her because I've listened to so many of her interviews. But um, no, this actually is other stuff. There's like a lot of data about like China and stuff like that that was really fascinating. So hopefully I'll have a review of that eventually in addition to the first book so yeah loving that and uh okay the next thing i finished was goblet of fire which was tied for my favorite harry potter book when i was a kid um and so that's book four and book five was the one it was tied with for favorites when i was a kid i think five is my favorite but i really love four <laughs> because of all the tasks of course so this is book four when Harry Potter is 14 years old and there is a competition being held at his school where a bunch of other magic, some other magical schools are all congregating at Hogwarts to complete three very dangerous tasks. And like 
Um, like one of them involves a dragon and there's like a maze and yeah it's like the tasks were so fun for me and the character of mad eye moody mad eye moody is a, a crazy looking teacher who's like obsessed with like protective policies basically constant vigilance <laughs> um so yeah i i love the harry potter series i don't know i got like a disparaging comment about that um recently and i was just like what's wrong with i don't know whatever it's i can like kids books you know i can i can enjoy them as an adult um who do you think writes kids books it's adults who love children's literature obviously so anyways um next i just today finished empire of the ants by bernard werber yay um this was really good i gave it a 75 out of 100 and i just filmed a review of it so hopefully you'll be seeing that soon um, and I'm also filming a vlog that involves it. So I will definitely talk about it more later. But this is following two ant civilizations and a human civilization. A, a, a family. Um, so in the ant civilization storyline, it's kind of a mystery thriller plot where there's some kind of secret weapon that's like decimating the ants and they don't know how it's happening they don't know why it's happening or who's doing it and so um it's really following these ants who are trying to kind of solve that mystery and save their ant civilizations and it does with a lot it deals with a lot of really common themes in sci-fi but it feels like very fresh to me i really did enjoy it it took me several months to finish because it's not an audiobook or ebook but regardless i really enjoyed it so um yeah i would recommend this i think as long as you don't get too creeped out by ants. <laughs> um, really enjoyed it and excited that I read it. I'm, so, I'm excited I'm finally getting into some sci-fi. Like, after naming my channel Dostoevsky in Space, I thought I'd be reading a lot more sci-fi, but it does have problems. The reason why I rated it 75 out of 100 is I didn't really connect with any of the characters, and that is a very common problem with sci-fi, and that might be why I didn't read it very quickly um because after reading something like red rising where it was like all about the characters for me um you know i just i i was very spoiled by red rising but really i'm into the sci-fi for the ideas so um this definitely delivered on the ideas it was fascinating loved this loved it so um and i also finished acts this morning as well acts of the apostles in the bible and I really uh, loved reading this. It was It's all about Paul's missionary journeys, basically. Um, and it's written by Luke, who is the author of the Gospel of Luke as well. And he's so detailed and like, you just get a real picture of the life at the time that um, they were living. And I just, it's so fascinating and I love it. It's so good, guys. Um, so highly recommend reading Acts if you never have. It's it's well worthwhile, well worth reading. So, and Jenny told me about a biography of Paul that I really want to read <laughs> because I just went through Acts. And Paul is such a central figure when you're reading the Bible consistently. It, he's an important person to know about. So, and it's by N.T. Wright. And I've read other things by N.T. Wright. So hopefully we'll get to that before too long. But I do have a busy month planned out, a busy TBR planned out. So I've got some of the things here that I might potentially read. We'll see. So I'll start with um, <laughs> one that I've had for like, I just keep checking it out and renewing it from the library because I just haven't gotten really a chance to start it. But The Idiot by Elif Batuman, which was recommended by Alana Estelle. Wonderful. Go follow her if you haven't yet. She's awesome. And... Um, you y'all know I loved The Idiot by Dostoevsky, and this one is apparently related to that. So I'm excited to try it at some point. It's so big, I'm just a little bit intimidated, I think. Um, but I think it'll probably be a quick read, I think. We'll see. So there's that one. Um, so maybe I should talk to you about the things that I'm prioritizing. Um, so Kate Howes book clubs, various book clubs of hers, are going to be reading The Egoist by George Meredith and Excellent Women, which I believe is by Barbara Pym. 
Um, so that's her Patreon book club and also her Kindred Spirits book club, neither of which I have actually read the books for in quite some time. <laughs> it's been a busy couple of months, which I knew was going to happen. I knew that that was going to happen. But I want to get back into the swing of things because I usually really enjoy Kate's picks. She's a good picker. So, and, um, initially I was also planning to read, um, I don't know if you can see that. I just set my shoe up. And it might be in your eye line. I don't know. Anyways, I initially was going to start Moby Dick this month um, with Tiffany. However, um, she ended up having a really packed month planned for April. So I think I might try to wait. Although I started it already and I'm really interested and want to read more. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. I have other things to prioritize other than that. But I'm excited to try more American literature because Willa Cather has turned me on to American literature. Speaking of whom, Oh Pioneers is um, Tiffany's Patreon book club read. And this is what I'm planning to read next in addition to some manga um, when I need a break from heavy stuff. I haven't actually been reading very much heavy stuff for a while. I've been working on my Korean really hard. Instead, I'm joining an academy starting in May. And so I've been trying to kind of prepare myself for that. Um, but regardless, O Pioneers is the first in like a series, I believe, by Willa Cather. And it's about a pioneer woman. So I'm excited to try. I actually started this this morning as well. And I really think it's beautiful already. I'm so excited continue with that. And, okay, I've just got way too much going on here, but this this is just my norm. I always have lots of options. We'll see what I get to. Don't know. I might end up talking about these more in later months, but um, I was also supposed to start the memoirs of Lady Hyegyeong with um, Tiffany and Joanna, my K-drama buddies, this month, but I ended up dropping out of our current K-drama because I was like, feeling a little overwhelmed <laughs> and the drama was very like plot heavy and I wasn't following it very well like I just was really struggling so um so we were supposed to be meeting about the book after watching our k-drama once a week so until they start their next k-drama I probably won't start memoirs of Lady Kagan. it might be more of like a, a second half of 2023 project but I really want to get to that and I'm also kind of in the mood to continue with demons now that the now that the readathon's over but i was so busy for a while you know um but now I, i'm just i'm very interested in russian things again so um which is an exciting place to be i've been missing russia um anyways another thing that i may get to sometime soon with victoria i i'm kind of waiting to see when she finishes Babel. that's what she's working on when she's finished with that i'm gonna pounce on her and be like, you want to read Cloud Cuckoo Land? I have no idea if I'm going to like this, guys. Literally no idea. I haven't read Cloud Atlas. But I'm excited to try this. Isn't Cloud Atlas by him? Maybe not. Anthony Doerr. Oh, all the light we cannot see. I have no idea if I'll like this. I'm excited to try it. It's giant, though. But I got this from a little free library down the street. And ever since then, I've wanted to try it. And when Victoria mentioned it in a video, being excited about it, I was like, let's buddy read it, let's buddy read it. So, um, and it was just her birthday, by the way. Uh, you should totally send Victoria things off of her book wish list. Um, that's what I did. That's how I'm convincing her to buddy read this with me. Um, another thing that I really want to maybe try and speed through in the next couple months is easy Korean reading for beginners because I'm really getting to the point where I can read in Korean pretty well. And I want to start really building up my vocabulary more organically rather than giving myself tests and vocabulary lists and using apps. I really want to start reading um, so that I can really start texting and writing with Koreans. Because uh, I tried that. I tried texting with Koreans and I was too slow to keep up with them. I just couldn't do it. Um, so, but I'm thinking if I get more, if I get better at reading, there's a theory out there that, you know, kind of more immersion in the language, listening and reading will do more for you than actually like studying grammar and vocab lists and stuff like that. So we'll see if that's true. For me, I don't know that that will really work as well. Uh, until I'm pretty familiar with the language. But at this point, I am pretty familiar with Korean. So I feel like I'm ready to try those things. Okay. Uh, my camera just turned off. 
I don't know what happened. So anyways, <laughs> moving on to the rest of my TBR. Um, I also have been wanting to read a canticle for, for Leibowitz for a long time. And now that I've finally finished my current sci-fi pick, maybe I can finally get to this. Somebody reminded me of it in the comments of my fantasy video that I came out this month. And I really want to get to this because I've been wanting to read it for forever. We'll see what I think of it. Um, I also really want to finish a book, a fantasy book. Um, oh shoot, I didn't actually write down what that was because I wasn't thinking of it at the time. But it's really gorgeous and I've just like stalled on it for quite some time um, because again, I was so busy for a while. Um, a Brightness Long Ago by Guy Guy Ryuke. Okay. I'm really enjoying the writing, um, but literally I haven't touched it in months and I really want to get back to it. So we'll see. Yeah, and Lord of the Rings Fellowship of the Ring. I started that. Um, and so I'll probably be working on those. Um, and as for manga, um, there's one uh, that's online that I want to read for my reading like 80s blog that I'm doing. It's called, uh, sorry, I don't know what it's called. Something in the moonlight. <laughs> we'll see what happens. It's supposed to be really sad. So it's supposed to be like bittersweet, which is totally Mingi's style. It's recommended by Mingi of 80s. He really loves the bittersweet manga. And I think he really likes anime as well, but I don't know which animes yet that he's a fan of. But anyways, this is another one that just came in from the library um, that Kellyanne Mitchell, I think recommended. Wonderful channel, by the way, wonderful newer channel. Um, definitely check her out and she, actually she didn't recommend this. She said she was interested in trying it and so I got it too. Hey, you wanna, do you want to buddy read it, Kelly? <laughs> um, we can talk on Voxer on Instagram. Uh, anyways, um, yeah, so that that's mainly, oh, there is more. Um, and Korean Stories for Language Learners, which is one that I've been working on very slowly. Randy gave me the physical copy this this a month for my birthday and I'm really loving this so much. Like it's totally entertaining stories like that keep me intellectually engaged, which is really nice because sometimes the beginner kind of reading can be really boring. <laughs> but um, and then The Case Against the Sexual Revolution by Louise Perry, which is going to have to go back to the library in like two days and I'm still only halfway through. See, this is what happens if there's no ebook or audiobook available. I will read the whole thing physically, but it will take me months, especially if it's like new and it keeps going back to the library and totally messing up my groove. This is fascinating though, because Louise Perry is a feminist and she comes at this with a lot of data talking about how actually the current idea that we have about sex in uh, America and in like civilized nations is actually really bad for women. It's terrible. It totally prioritizes the wants and uh, needs of males rather than females. So uh, fascinating, fascinating to read from her perspective. Yeah. Anyways, that's all. That's, that is my plans. I have late, way too many plans. We'll see what I get done. And let me know in the comments what you're planning to read in April. And what you have, any thoughts that you have on these books, I would love to hear them all. Okay, I'll talk to you soon.